encouraging the development of a critical understanding of racism in Scottish education. When I first joined the teaching profession, I hadn't given much thought to my racial identity and the curriculum's potential to actively challenge or possibly reinforce racism. It was only once I attended events for BEME teachers that I realised racism was more than just isolated acts of prejudice. When I undertook an MED research on anti-racist education, I began to understand the deeper roots of institutional racism. So you'd never experience it yourself, never given your racial identity much thought, then you go to one of these meetings, one of these events, and end up undertaking some course or other, and now you've come to the conclusion that there's a need for drastic change, development of critical understanding on something that you learn in research papers. Critical race theory is a framework that caught my interest as it considers racism to be normal, endemic and a structural problem, as opposed to the mere simplistic conception which places responsibility on the individual and intent. Critical race theory emphasises that good intentions alone will not end racism. A critical exploration of whiteness is needed. Racism does not only disadvantage people of colour, it simultaneously privileges white people. You know, I always remember a story my granddad told me that when he was 18, he moved out to London for a year or two to live with his brother. And he said that was the first time he'd ever seen a black man. So, I mean, my granddad would be about 73, 74 today if he was still alive. So we're talking a good, a good while ago. And obviously, Scotland was 4% non-white, let's just say, in 2011. So I can't imagine what it was like when my granddad was my age or even younger. In order for him to have got to 18 years old before ever seeing a black individual, that would suggest to me that Scotland was pretty damn white, or especially where he lived, anyway, which is the same place I'm from. But yet, while simultaneously living in a near enough ethno state, they created institutional racism and the privileged themselves above who exactly? How can society, Scotland, be systemically racist and so on, and be a white supremacist patriarchy, to name a few, to benefit the whites, to benefit whitey, and oppress everybody else, when nobody else lived here? I'm not disputing whether or not instances of racism or prejudice or whatnot have occurred to them, but I have read many people like an Ask Sarwar, the Labour MSP, many of the publications pumped out by Education in Scotland, the Scottish Government, and so often they end up referring to some imaginary glass ceiling, disparities, lack of diversity and so on and so forth in order to prove some point about so-called white supremacy and structural racism within Scotland. In fact, the Scottish Government report Teaching in a Diverse Scotland clearly documents the systemic disadvantages the BEME teachers face by, defaulting advance, uh, by default advan uh, advantaging white students. Well, it says here, Non-BEME teachers and school leaders lack the experiences of engaging and working with and within a diverse workforce, leading to a mixture of awareness and the daily lived experiences of minority ethnic people. The lack of experience and awareness or the presence of racial prejudice impacts on recruitment and selection into programmes of initial teaching education, as well as the appointment and promotion of ethnic minority staff in the senior positions. The disparity of perceptions was evident from the working group's discussion with a range of respondents, and it's clear that equity literacy, which is an understanding of the existence of bias and inequity in our spheres of influence, is notably absent in some parts of the education system. Not all equality areas receive the same poverty. There's been a distinct lack of willingness to recognise racism or racial inequality as a live feature in Scottish society, though the Race Equality Action Plan is a, a constructive sorry, step forward. Yeah, yes, yeah, some, some compelling evidence here. Anybody could have wrote that. Uh, some of the blog entries on the anti-racist educator confirm the scale of the problem of the anti-racist educator, yeah. It's an insightful website. You know, they uh, recently came out in defence of the Resisting Whiteness Conference at the University of Edinburgh. There's quite a few people made videos on it on YouTube, I've seen. And I mean, on the face of it, it's just a bit of a ridiculous name. Naturally, you're going to receive criticism, but of course, the do what they do best. We at the anti-racist educator want to show our complete support and solidarity 
As people of colour, we have a right to privilege our own voices. Oh, yeah, fucking... I don't think anybody said that. I don't think anybody, to my knowledge, was criticising the fact that you were going to privilege your own voices. The fact of the matter was, you held an event in Scotland called Resisting Whiteness, and you had two specific safe spaces for... Uh, I can't even recall the words that were used to describe some of the reasons that somebody might feel the need to go into one of these safe spaces. Uh, one of them white people were banned from. And then you weren't allowing white people to talk. You know, any white people that actually went to that, I mean, what were you, <laughs> I don't know what they were playing out if they did, but the uh, point is though, that there's quite a lot of things to draw criticism at in regards to the setup of the event. But of course, it's a white supremacist society, remember? And they're, they're, they're merely tackling the white supremacy. My mistake. As people of colour, I read that, uh, this is nothing to apologise for in a society defined by white supremacy. The system, oh, you be kill on the brackets here. Uh, the system in which those racialized as white, racialized as white, because remember, race doesn't exist apparently. You know, as I said, I've said a multitude of times before, I never gave race a second thought. I never had to. But I'm fucking hearing it more and more often. And funnily enough, it's from people like this. Anti-racist educator, we facilitate anti-racist education. Riveting. Training. For anyone seeking to make a difference in our public engagement meetings. Invite participants uh, to reflect on their experiences. Develop a critical understanding of racism in education. And suggest solutions from our members. And a rich history of anti-racist literature. Oh yes. Decolonizing education. Explored the ways in which knowledge is presented and how relations are structured in contemporary Scottish education. The students from universities across the country considered the manifestation of racism in their own learning and examined the structures that kept white privilege in place. Yeah, fucking hell, man. It isn't uncommon at this stage for someone to retort that we are the ones being racist for noticing whiteness. Oh, just for noticing whiteness, apparently. No, see, <laughs> it's quite strange how you're jumping to assumptions and assuming that white people all have this philosophy, this shared worldview that you believe that their philosophy has been passed down to generations. You believe that they built a society in which we benefit from today. I mean, the fact of the matter is, any benefits that may exist to do with a uh, majority-based principle, you know? We deliberately employ the term people of colour in our work as we recognise the importance of turning gays and critically examining whiteness in education. Oh, fuck me tech savvy or what. So what does anti-racist education look like? Well, it's pretty much just anti-white bullshit disguised as anti-whiteness. It involves a long journey of unlearning racism and some deep reflection on one's own racial identity along with its privileges and disadvantages. Pretending not to see race and merely committing to being a good person is not enough. And I'm sick of this fucking... This argument getting thrown about as well. They try to imply that people don't quote quote see race and it's as if they take it literally. You know? Of course people see race. Of course people notice differences. We notice differences in the way people dress. That's what humans do. It's just what you decide to do with the thoughts in your head. It's what you how you decide to act, etc. You can't fucking help what people feel inside. But at the end of the day, as long as they keep it to themselves, then who cares? But I don't spend my time, and whenever I've been in the company of somebody who's not white, I've not fucking seen them any differently or thought of them any less. But there seems to be a hell of an increase in recent months, it's not recent years, of people who are not white, who seem to view people that are white in a negative light. And I, I can't help but feel that a lot of it's got to do with this shit, if I'm honest. In fact, it's quite possible to unwittingly reinforce racism through microaggressions and implicit, implicit bias and an ethnocentric curriculum that places white people at its centre. Oh my fucking days. Microaggressions. <laughs> people are fucking insane. I'm away to check my privilege. <laughs> Peace.